Hi, my name is Sarah and Clark from the Strongholds System. Our pronouns are they, them, and we are the panel moderators for this coming out panel for the Plural Positivity World Conference 2020. I will first introduce myself, then ask our panel members to introduce themselves, and then we will dive deep into the questions we have for our panelists today about coming out as plural. So we are the Stronghold System. You might know us from Power to the Plurals, a plural resource website, our support group Alternation on Facebook, or maybe from our work for the Plural Association nonprofit. We are 31 years old, well, our body is, and we got diagnosed with DID in 2010, 11, and 12. We came out to friends and family various times in those early years. In 2015, we came out to the mental health and DID survivor side of the internet. In 2017, we started our YouTube channel and hence came out to the rest of the world. I'm very proud to introduce our panel members to you today. Hi, we're the Redwoods. We're nine people in one body. We're also trans. Our ages and genders vary and we collectively use they, them pronouns. My name is Ali. I use she, her pronouns. We started coming out to family and friends in 2012. We kept a low profile, but began speaking to small audiences in 2016. By 2017, we began coming out to most new people when meeting them and giving talks on multiplicity to audiences of hundreds of people at conferences in the US and Europe. In 2019, we were interviewed on BBC radio and reached hundreds of thousands of people. This year, we were featured in an Anthony Padilla YouTube video on multiplicity that went viral with over 7 million views. We're excited to be here at this conference and on this panel. Coming out has changed our life for the better. It's an ongoing process that never stops. In our society, everyone is assumed to be singular unless you state otherwise. Visible plural activists still come out again and again on a regular basis whenever we meet new people. A little more about us Redwoods, we live as openly plural in an all trans house we started in Oakland, California. We grew up on the East Coast and are out to our family there. We enjoy making and listening to music, time in nature and traveling. We love sci-fi movies and shows like Interstellar and The Expanse. We organized to help empower plurals at the Redwood Circle. We also founded Mask Oakland, an acclaimed grassroots organization that provides masks to houseless communities and other vulnerable populations in the Bay Area during wildfire seasons and now the current pandemic. Plurals are strong and have so much to contribute in all arenas. Thank you for having us and for creating this wonderful conference. Hello, uh, we're the Sky Squad. We're an energetic uh, adaptive system of about 21 people. A lot of us are vampires or we're uh, fictives. Uh, body is 22, we're female, and we've been plural since anywhere between like about 2012 to 2018. It's, it's kind of unclear exactly when we became a system, but um, yeah, that's us. Greetings listeners, this is Chris. For the purposes of this panel, I'm going by Chris Ampersand when it's written. I have not yet chosen a system name. I don't know if I'm going to choose a system name. I simply go by my first name, Chris, most of the time. Most of my, um, I, I have come out to my immediate family and friends, but I have not come out to my extended family or online, which is why I'm not stating my full name. Um, if you wish to contact me, uh, that you can contact the organizers of this panel, or you can, I will give an email address, an anonymized email address where I can be emailed. Uh, you're listening to the voice of either Chris or Gunther or both. I'm a plural of around 50 years old. I've known them plural for about 17 years. I switch very fluidly and seamlessly. So um, it's not easy to tell who I am at the moment. I have to think about it or go by evidence. And um, most of my fronts do not have amnesic barriers, or at least the ones that commonly front don't have any amnesic barriers. So I have contiguous memory. And so, um, I basically can go through life as if I'm singular, but I'm not. <laughs> Thank you everyone so much for introducing yourselves. Let's get started with the questions for the coming out panel. The first question for today is, how did you first come out? 
it's really changed. Now when we come out, it's a quick version of our intro. Hi, we're the Redwoods, we're a bunch of people, etc. And then we answer questions or provide specific info based on who we're coming out to. We often reassure people by saying, we've explained this to lots of people before, you're in good hands, or we've given talks to lots of people. But in 2012, it was about coming out to ourselves, emerging into co-consciousness while simultaneously grappling with this new to us label of dissociative identity disorder. <clears throat> this is Eliza, uh, they, them pronouns. Um, so the very first people we told were friends who were witnessing Ali Z and I get to know each other. Um, many of you can relate. I thought I was the only one here for years. So from the perspective of our loved ones at the time, DID was happening, happening to me. Uh, we were just telling who we could, like the whole thing, and taking refuge at a couple friends' apartments. Coming out then also looked like calling the Trevor LGBTQ Youth Crisis Line. We had also just realized we were trans and saying, hey, we think we are trans and also DID. And having really actually beautiful responses like, it's okay, there's a lot of people like you. Something we wouldn't be able to find from clinicians for years. A lot of early coming out was just explaining this truly epic phenomenon for example, hey, we can talk to each other. Switching feels like pouring a liquid between different cups. I'm scared. I'm overwhelmed. This is so nice. What do I do? A big, exciting, terrifying mix, a healing crisis, one hotline counselor said, where you keep learning more and feeling relief, but that raises more urgent questions and it's cumulatively exhausting. Constant discovery, amazing observations, daily panic, struggles to care for basic needs. There were also phone calls to family in a grave and tragic tone. Hello? I need to tell you something. This is serious. I have dissociative identity disorder. And it's so-and-so's fault because of abuse and da-da-da-da, right? So I sometimes got sucked into the very negative mainstream narrative and explained it as if my, my life was ending. Um, as if everything had been overturned and now I was facing some horrible existence. I had no positive plurality examples and I wouldn't for at least another year. This is Ali again. Um, Z and I really took a back seat at that time and would only kind of come forward in a tiny number of relationships where Eliza had already come out and explained, hey, there's these other people who also want to be known. Eliza felt like they had to ask for permission for us to come out around other people. Uh, switching was also emotionally and physiologically a lot harder and more vulnerable then. You can see we can switch pretty easily now, but it really felt like pushing some levers hard in a way now where we can more fluidly switch. Thinking about how often we front and switch openly now and how many people we each know, it's painful to look back on those years where I went months at a time before getting to interact with anyone on the outside. We know many people out there are watching are in that same place now. Uh, you might not feel like you have anyone you can talk to about your experiences, or you might feel like you have system members who have no one they can talk to and that's okay. And it's great that you're here at this panel and maybe you can find some ways to learn how to share and open up more. We're happy to help. Um, we've come a long way and we had to start somewhere, right? We're really proud of ourselves and our survival skills. It was a really scary transition with almost no knowledgeable guidance or support and definitely not at the scale we needed. But explaining what was going on got family to at least provide us the material support to help us try to stabilize and figure things out. And as we were able to explain more over the years, they mostly listened. We first came out to uh, some friends in college. Uh, Melody was playing as herself in a role play game that was set up between some friends. And over the course of the game, 
um, well, this, this character was based off of her. So she was basically kind of role-playing as herself in the game. And over the course of the game, um, Melody got really attached to this friend group and sort of wanted to uh, come out to the friend group as, hey, uh, this isn't just a character. Um, I'm a person, and this, this character was based off of me. And at the time, we still kind of thought that Melody was um, an imaginary friend of sorts, but because um, it was kind of weird how she came about, well, I mean, at some point, she kind of transitioned from being an imaginary friend to being like a headmate, but we didn't know about plural things at the time. So we just um, pulled each of the friends in the group aside and kind of said, hey, um, it's kind of this sentient imaginary friend I have. Her name's Melody, and you've kind of already met her in the game. And well, they were they were really accepting about it. And it, it took various degrees of like being confused, but it was they were more so like, oh, that's that's pretty cool. That's pretty neat. When I first came out, I I discussed this with my friend that was plural first, and decided that the way I was going to do it was to tell like you know people that i wanted them to that, that i wanted to know as a statement as in i figured this out about myself it's you know it's something that might be of interest to you or might be of of relevance and so i'm telling you um and this way there's nothing to argue about it's not it's not it's not a something you know in question it's just it's it's a done deal i know and that's it Thank you. How did you describe your plurality when you first came out? Good question. This is Eliza. In the beginning, it took us a lot of time and intense energy, and we would basically share a convoluted version of the medical model of DID, uh, plus sharing about the phenomena of these people who were new to me. Um, I don't know how to say this, but I'm not the only one here. There are to others who would like to meet you. Is, is that okay? It was intense. This is Joy, she and her. I wasn't even around then yet. I came into co-consciousness in 2015. Five more did the same since then. Now we describe ourselves as a group of individuals and have lots of nuanced information about each other we can share and we try not to center any one individual. We talk about it as being many in a body uh, we've become fond of saying it's about one to three percent of the population. We love each other in this body and, and being multiple is an emerging form of neurodiversity that's really going to change the world. The way I describe my plurality to other people when I came out was that I had multiple personalities, but that it's not like the movies, at least not for me, that I have contiguous memory. And so I could be treated as if I was, you know, as if I was normal, as if. I didn't have this, but that something more complicated was going on behind the scenes that you don't see. And usually people look at me like funny, like, well, so why are you telling me? If I don't need to know why you're telling me, this is like, well, you know, you're close enough to me that you might see it or that I might have some strange behavior here and there that, you know, it may, may be explainable by this way. Um, because to me, I've I've had strange behavior here and there because I had switched and my my perspective changed, and so like the memory's all the same, but yet like how I think and what I'm thinking and what I'm feeling all all are suddenly different, and so I wanted I wanted people to understand that I had something somewhat somewhat challenging going on here and there that I may need to you know, may, may want them to know. And so it was, it's, it's a little bit for me, it's a little bit, it was a little bit complicated to explain. And usually it's a, it's like a five minute conversation. And then it's sort of like, Oh, Oh, okay. Well, if I don't have anything to worry about, then I don't have to worry. Thank you for sharing. Did you lose any friends, family jobs when you came out? Eliza here again. It's complicated because you don't know which relationships and opportunities drift away or don't materialize because of your plurality. But in many social and professional settings, you can feel distance, people smiling, withdrawing, seeming a little confused. For certain parts of our past, 
it's not even clear how to begin to explain to those people who we are now. In the 2012 transition we made from singlet to, or thinking we were singlet, to understanding we were plural, most who cared about us made some effort to support us, but figuring out you are multiple, especially in the DID and trauma flashbacks context is pretty damn intense. It makes it hard to reach out to others. And it makes it hard for others to receive you because they're conditioned in singlet normativity and trauma avoidance by society. So they are really uncomfortable. Most friends tried, but we mostly knew cis gender abled singlets who were in their early 20s and very few cisgender abled singlets in their early 20s have the combination of skills and sense of justice to bear witness to and support someone in the position we were in. Essentially, we were experiencing the collapse of our entire paradigm of consciousness and identity and our reemergence with a new paradigm that challenges conventional thinking. It's really big and tumultuous, part of why we need more plural warm lines and plural informed crisis and counseling services. But we are also very upset that society set us up and set me up to experience our authentic trans plurality as such a loss compared to our anticipated future as a singlet cis guy. Uh, as we <laughs> regained our sense of dignity through activism and community with others, we've started regaining our confidence and our worth and value as friends. And I've begun and others in the system have begun re reconnecting with some folks from 2012 and before. But remarkably, a certain few people never abandoned us. And we are alive and forever grateful because of that. They always tried to understand what we were going through and to be there. I had a friend fly out from Seattle to the East Coast just to spend time with me when I was in a really stuck place. Thank you. I really appreciate all those folks. And it's also okay that some others did their best and then needed to back away or that we couldn't keep track of all the people who wanted to help us. Crisis management is really complex. It all helps one get to the next place, but still the relationship turnover can be really debilitating, depressing, painful. We didn't lose any friends from coming out. We, the, friend, the friends that we had first come out to were pretty accepting. Uh, family members that we've told uh, previously. Well, we haven't really told many family members because we're still a little iffy on that, but um, we've... I'm losing my train of thought, sorry. The people that we have told have been pretty supportive, so we haven't really lost anyone from coming out as plural when i came out to uh people about my plurality i didn't really lose jobs or friends generally at least not to begin with um the way in which i chose who to tell was to figure out how empathetic they were and also if there was some reason i wanted them to know and whether they were going to like you know whether they were going to be like a you know a little schoolgirl and go and tattletale and tell everybody and like you know make a big deal out of it and if if i thought they were going to do that i wouldn't tell them and and but if they were empathetic and and they were relatively they i felt they were important to me then i would then i would explain it to them so i only came out to a couple of co-workers at work um, who didn't tell anybody and they told me some interesting things about themselves as a result. And so when, when being vulnerable and having nothing going wrong, uh, slowly can build trust. And so I, I ended up building trust with those people. And later on, there were some issues with, uh, people who figured out and figured out it was a secret and it had to be, had to be, you know, uh, you know, had to be kept, you know, quiet about or something that they could use, you know, as leverage against me. And that was, that was sort of annoying. Um, and so for people like that, I ended up distancing, distancing myself from them and which is, you know, not necessarily a bad thing. Nothing terrible went wrong, um, in terms of, 
in terms of my plurality getting out to the rest of the world and you know and all that so um so generally speaking i i made more friends than lost or or made you know better close closer connections to people i already knew than than not thank you for sharing so vulnerably did you gain friends or find other plurals when you came out over time definitely but it took a while we met only one other system in our first year. We went to a very mixed experience inpatient setting because that's, I guess, what you do, right? You think, oh, I'm having a mental health type thing. I guess I'll go inpatient. We were treated even there as odd and rare for being plural. People would react going, oh, whoa. But one young black woman approached us and said, hey, I don't really show it around here, but I'm also 12 people. And she gave us advice, have meetings with each other and make decisions about what we wanna to do together. It was really life-changing advice, but I never saw her again. And it would be another year until we met anyone like us. Over time, being out has fundamentally transformed our entire social surroundings, not just by filtering out lots of singlets and helping us find a few good ones, but by enabling us to meet plurals and help many plurals meet each other, we have met hundreds of systems face-to-face -face in different contexts and closely befriended a dozen or so systems, which has been amazingly transformative. Some of them are participating in this conference. Since we've started coming out as plural and started sort of exploring our plurality and so searching for a space for us, we've run into a lot of plural spaces, mostly on Discord, but there's been some spaces on apps like Amino and places on Facebook and Reddit. And there's also a pretty good and active general plural community hashtag on Twitter. So we've th so through our experiences with um, not necessarily actually coming out as plural, but through uh, being plural and looking for spaces for us to be plural and we've really found a lot of places that we can feel comfortable in and we've made definitely quite a few friends through all of these places that we're in so that's that's been a really good experience for us i did make additional plural friends once i came out as plural because of association um or because of other friends that people had that they knew of that I could, you know, get in contact with and so forth. It's a little bit rare, um, but that happened. But I also met a, a number, quite a lot of plurals in the Healing Together Conference in Florida that I've gone to for the last two years. And that's really been good. Uh, generally speaking, the people that go to Healing Together have been diagnosed with DID and typically have uh, more amnesic barriers than not. And so but after a while they break through some of those and um and that's where things uh are more i feel like i'm i've i have more kindred spirits in terms of like when i when i talk to them what it's what having a uh a plural experience running through life is like you know where there's a lot of co-consciousness and and internal discussion and internal arguments and things like that so I have made a number of plural friends and I'm not on social media, so it's not easy for me to, to meet other plurals when I want to. I can't just simply go on Facebook because I'm not there or Twitter or what have you. And I don't want to be for a number of reasons. Uh, I tend to be a relatively private person and I like being able to associate with, with people that are, um, that I choose rather than sort of, you know, suddenly getting contacted by somebody that I don't. So that's, um, so I have made uh, additional friends and it's been great. Thank you so much, everyone. Did anyone else react poorly when you came out to them and how did you handle it? Yes. Basically, when people suck, move on because it's a big world and there are many singlets and plurals out there who are indeed worth your time. Easier said than done. 
Here are a few examples from 2012. We were shopping around for therapists and had one tell us he was only going to talk to me, Eliza, as if everyone else was a delusion. Take it or leave it, he said. We left immediately. Many friends and family had outdated ideas about what we should be doing. We basically just had to distance ourselves from people who were stuck in unhelpful approaches. We went to a trans support group for the first time and talked about being trans and multiple and someone chimed in, honey, you're not trans, you've got some other problem. That sucked. I guess our response to that was to lean further into other trans spaces and become one of the most visible trans plural activists in the world. But that night, we just drove home feeling extremely alone and didn't go back. Years later, when we were out enough to be talking about being multiple at a party, someone said, wait, isn't it simpler to be one person? To which we responded, sure, isn't it simpler to be straight than gay? By which we meant to highlight the absurdity of asking a marginalized person or people if it's simpler to be a member of the dominant normalized majority when we really have no choice but to be who we are. And there's been some relatively mild crap from trolls, mostly TERFs, using our multiplicity to trash us and trans people. We process it with friends and with time saw it subside and moved on. The only negative really um, responses that we got or, or sort of specifically negative responses was, well, first when we told the parents about it, again, this is still at a time when we didn't fully understand plural stuff um, we kind of just tried to explain how it happened and sort of go, Hey, this is, this is a thing. I have this, uh, we have this other person in our head. It's not the daughter that, you know, and it, I think at first they weren't really understanding of it. They didn't quite under get how it could happen. And they try to be like, Oh no, is this, do you like have a disorder? Is this like DID? Is this like bad? Is this other is this other person hurting you? And for a while, it was just really that sort of wariness of like, is this bad? Is this hurting you? Is this holding you back? And for a lot, for a pre, for like I guess a few months, they did think that this was bad. But even though we tried to explain, like, hey, no, uh, Melody is helping. Melody is good for us, or good for me. But you know, at the time, it was just the two us but um after a while they kind of sort of got used to it but there was sort of a point or i guess a point now that our system's bigger that the mom kind of sort of goes oh stop getting so many people i can't keep track of it etc and things like that and i don't think she means any harm by it because she's otherwise very accepting very understanding very supportive she even tries to ask like oh hey who's fronting or she tries to remember like voices to names but she, she just she forgets a lot but um still sometimes when it's she tries to tell us ah you're, you have too many people you need to stop i can't keep track of it and it's it's a little hurtful because it's not like we can, we, it's not like we did this on purpose and it's not like we can control it, but I guess she's kind of just like, can't, you know, keep, can't keep, tra she can't keep track of them. That's not her fault, but the, the language she uses is kind of weird. And then sometimes the dad was, um, kind of just wanted to lump us together as one person, even though we very clearly had very very different names, different interests, different personalities, different um, comfort levels with like physical contact. And it's, it's, it feels like he kind of sort of erases it because no, you're my daughter. You're all my daughter. And even though he like seems to accept it on the surface, it's, it's very much a situation where he's still struggling to really treat us as individuals. And it's probably, this is probably getting way off topic at this point, but it still feels like, um, it still feels like even though they're trying to be supportive, they're both, both of the parents are still struggling with the whole idea of, um, well, we're multiple people and we can't control how many of them, of many, how many of us there are. And that's kind of something they're going to have to deal with now that we're basically openly plural, but it still really becomes hard to sort of, um, 
talk to them about it because we feel like they're just gonna they can't handle it they can't remember everyone they can't really um fully conceptualize people sometimes do react a little bit poorly when i tell them that i'm plural or that i'm got multiple personalities uh them because of their own misconceptions because of tv and movies and so forth that they've run into but where it, it's you know dramatized and so the first question i usually usually get asked is like oh sir are you like sybil um or you know do you have an axe murderer in your head i'll literally get asked that do i have an axe murderer in my head and uh, and i look at them funny and okay you know i in the back of my mind sometimes i do have a personality that's more hard and more protective okay fine but no it's not like i have an axe murderer right i've never killed anybody right it's like don't you have to kill somebody to have an axe murderer in your head no it doesn't work that way so i look at them and i'm like no i'm not like sybil you know it, it's not like the movies and they look at me funny and it's just like it's not like the movies no it's not like the movies man and I try to explain, like, calm them down. Usually after a while, it's like, look, dude, you've been, you've known me for how long? It's like, wouldn't you, don't you think you'd know if I have an axe murder in my head? It's like, you've known me for 20 years. It's like, give me a break, you know? And it's like, and if you, and if I was like, Sybil, don't you think you'd see it by now? It's not like that, dude. And, um, and usually after a few minutes, you know, things, things calm down and it's like, oh, okay. So I don't really have to worry about this. No, there's nothing really to worry about. I'm just letting you know, um, for people who don't know me very well, um, well, actually, let me think about that. I don't think I've told anybody that I don't know well, maybe that's why I tell people that I, that I know well and not others that don't. Um, but for people who have met me and, you know, at the conference who have the ID, they know I don't have an ax murderer in my head. It's not the way it works. So I don't have to explain a whole lot. So, um, yeah, worst case is just misconceptions and best case is, you know, I've literally had other people I've told them it's like, Oh, I thought everybody was like that. Literally. Someone said this to me. It's like, I thought everyone had some of this. Well, you know, maybe some of us do. Thank you for sharing. What is the best reaction anyone had to you coming out to them? Fortunately, there were awesome reactions at each stage. Ken, our friend who witnessed us uh, meet each other for the first time, told us in those early days that while his experience as one person in a body was different than ours, we didn't need to feel bad for needing the space and support he was offering us. He told us witnessing you all as a group is helping me to better understand my own selfhood, my own internal world. I just thought that was really cool because here I was feeling like, oh my God, I'm a mess. I'm taking up all this person's time and energy trying to process this epic experience I'm having. And here he is saying that it's valuable. That meant a lot. Our sister was one of the first people we told, and she's just been so awesome about continuing to learn and adapt to our own evolving sense of ourselves and really take seriously the stakes of what we're saying and try to support us where we are. It's been awesome. Thank you. Uh, in 2016, we were doing some career exploring and doing well in a gender and sexuality law studies class at an important university. And we came out to the professor as multiple. Uh, she had wanted to work with us on something. And we said, if you're going to work with us, you should know who you're working with. And she said, after listening pretty intently, you know, thank you for sharing this may feel like a black mark of shame, but it doesn't have to be. I see a lot of parallels to the topics of this course on gender and sexuality rights. And it sounds like you may have a calling. That was really powerful. I walked out of that building going, wow, because I'd always been told, don't tell teachers, professors, bosses. And this was like really cool. And, and we kept in touch for a while after that. And she was really encouraging of my activism, our activism. Recently, you know, we were 
checking out different career paths again. And, and we came out in an info interview to somebody uh, who works on diversity at a big company, like the diversity HR person, asking about how to secure a safe workplace to be openly plural. And she was encouraging and told us to communicate, you know, we're a team and this is what we need to work well together internally in the workplace. And this is what we need to work, have our team work well with other teams. We thought that was pretty cool and we'll probably use it someday. And online, the positive responses to our work outnumber the trolls about 200 to one. As far as positive reactions go, we've had a lot of people, um, well, we've talked to, we've come up to a lot of people, mostly on the internet, uh, mostly like old friends, um, a club of people that from college, um, stuff like that. And well, it's been, a, it's been a lot of good reactions and people are, um, usually are there like, oh, that's pretty cool. Or I don't understand this. Tell me more. And it's generally a pretty positive reaction, but there's no, I don't think there's really any necessarily any one best reaction that, that we've had because it's all, it's all kind of just, okay, that's cool. The best type of reaction that I get when, when I tell people that I'm plural is for them to ask intelligent questions about it and like empathetic questions about it. Like what is the experience like or what, uh, what does it mean for you as a person or how do you, how do you go through life switching between personalities? What does it mean? You know, how did this happen? Those types of things where you get to explain, have a chance to explain uh, what your day-to-day -day life is, is like or your experience or, or, um, or those types of things. And, and so having some type of a you know, heart-to-heart -heart conversation is probably the best reaction I've, I've seen, and that's more common than not. Thank you all. What is the most frustrating thing about dealing with singular normative society? There's so much that's frustrating about singular normative society. Probably I would say the uphill battle of the informed minority with our lived experience and expertise facing the ignorant or worse miseducated supermajority uh, while our fellow plurals are in crisis because of their ignorance. It's very frustrating. Um, I'd say another frustrating thing is that this work is so essential. It's life-saving, yet it's really under-recognized. And that sucks because I want more people to see, but I appreciate that this conference is helping uplift uh, the power of plural activism. The most frustrating thing about being plural in like a society that's like so focused on singular individuals and singular bodies is, I guess, the assumption that there's always going to be the one person, like the association from like one to one. There's this assumption that there's going to be like a main person or there's going to be, it's going to be the same person. And well, the, obviously the reality is that we have different people in here. There's different names, there's different personalities, different preferences. We may even have different pronouns. And conceptually, it's not really easy for singlets to um, conceptualize or remember this or remember that I'm not going to be talking to the same person, even though they, there's this, even though it's like the same body. So sometimes it feels like we have to sort of perform under a given name or persona so we don't confuse people. So that way we don't, they don't go, ha, huh, wait, that's weird. Why are, you, why are you acting strange, you know? The most frustrating thing for me, for or for us, for dealing with singular normative society is that singular normative society is has different expectations, or, or has the expectations that everyone is singular, or expectations that people will be able to put up with misbehavior in ways in which I don't I don't find it I'm I'm capable of doing. Um, so, but I have post-traumatic stress and I have for a long time and, you know, most plurals still, you know, deal with post-traumatic stress in some way because it's sort of like a built-in thing that we, we all have to have first before we become plural to begin with. And so that, the post-traumatic stress is the most difficult thing for me 
uh, in dealing with life and other people expecting that I, I will deal with, you know, people that are like angry and bullying and all this other stuff, um, or, or being nasty or, you know, being told that I, you know, talk to the hand, it's not my problem. Those, those types of things where the, you know, the various people and systems don't follow the rules, don't follow the, the written expectations. And then, I'm expected to somehow put up with this and just and just suffer. Those those that's probably the most difficult thing for me uh, to deal with, like singular normative society. Agreed. Thank you so much. What is your best plural superpower for dealing with singular society? Quick problem solving on our feet, because there are a bunch of us, we can respond really well to crisis and change. Also, co-consciousness and co-fronting are really powerful because they give us the ability to show who we are and how we relate to each other. And that has been a powerful means of changing people's understanding of plurality. I guess what makes it easier dealing with singlet society is, I guess, the whole idea of a singlet sona where we, we all act like sort of one person, I guess. We, we don't do it a lot because we're so comfortable with just acting like ourselves, but sometimes we kind of bring the voice down to a certain level or we type a certain way when dealing with like professional emails or like, or stuff like that. Um, it's a really weird concept because it kind of comes naturally to us, naturally to us, but it's also, it also feels weird. Like it feels like we're pretending to be that one person, to just be sky rather than like or i guess in, in this case pretend to be tiffany since she's like the the original and that's the body's name and whatnot but um i guess that would technically be our superpower because it helps it makes things a little bit easier and we don't have to like i guess trouble everyone with trying to remember all of us My best superpower for dealing with singular normative society is being able to choose who I want to be right now at will and can fluidly switch without having to uh, be dissociated for a while. So I can, I can be speaking and mid conversation switch to a, a, a more, you know, more protector role or I can be a protector and then switch to a more softer, more empathetic role or personality as the situation fits. <clears throat> it's not completely easy to do. I can do it. Um, <clears throat> it doesn't have to be a hard switch and can, it can be something that's, you know, automatically triggered because I automatically, you know, do this, you know, day to day, you know, mid conversation, like within a second kind of a thing. Um, it's, it's relatively quickly. So that's my personal best superpower. And that's particularly helpful because I can, I can be the personality that fits best for who I'm talking to when I can do that. Fantastic to hear your answers. Thank you all for sharing. Who has been your best supporter in being out? Everyone in a plural activist text group we formed a couple years ago has been amazing. And also our siblings have done a great job. We also feel like we've done a pretty kick-ass job of supporting each other. Our biggest supporter has definitely been our date mate. Um, they're wonderful, very fantastic. They're always, they're, they, they treat us all like individuals and they all, they care about each and every one of us, like in, but not just as a collective and not just as Sky, but they care about us like each, like as each individual headmate and they would try to remember our names our pronouns any preferences we have um and they've just been generally very fantastic and so loving and caring and supportive and we we just we really appreciate them like a lot my best supporter for being out and being plural is any of my plural friends um which includes the chris's who i speak to often um, basically anybody that's plural that, uh, is also out understands that we like to be understood as people, as, you know, as bodies that ha inhabit multiple, per you know, p multiple people and multiple personalities. 
And so anyone that I know that's plural and out understands that desire and and is an advocate for for doing that. Thank you so much, everyone. After coming out, how do you feel about your decision to come out? This is Z. I use Z. Coming out is a choice we have made over 1,000 times in one-on-one -on -one conversations, small groups, open mics, and big stages and screens. It's a choice we'll have to keep making. Though with the viral video we mentioned, it feels like we're starting to reach a turning point of no going back. Sometimes we miss certain people in places that feel hard to reach without a singlet facade. But the fundamental healing of authentic living has been worth it for us. We have to fight harder for economic and emotional security than if we weren't open. But at least we get to do it together which means that the foundation of any success will be much more solid than anything built on the horror of faking being singlet, hiding and disconnecting from each other. After coming out in a lot of spaces, it feels kind of, uh, not really liberating, but it feels, it feels like we're doing something good. It feels really, first of all, it feels really nice to be able to be ourselves in certain spaces and we can feel comfortable saying, hey, I'm this person right now. Uh, hey, I don't know who I am right now, etc. Um, and it feels nice that we can, we can comfortably say, hey, this is plurality. This is us. This is what we're experiencing. And we're able to sort of handle the negative backlash of that. Um, and it kind of feels, it feels good what we're doing. It feels like we're able to help set the stage for future systems by letting people know about plurality and about our own experiences with being plural for the sake of people who aren't like as able to do that safely. So we, we definitely don't regret coming out, um, at all. There's probably some times when we wish we could have done it differently or done it better or even done it sooner. But overall, we're definitely we're pretty happy about what we're doing and where we're going with this, you know, plural stuff. How do I feel about coming out? Well, I I'm relatively comfortable with the way in which I've come out and as far as I've come out and I haven't come out all the way and I don't regret not coming out all the way. There are some good and bad things about not coming out all the way, which is not everybody knows that I'm plural that knows me and it's not necessarily easy to find me, you know, because I'm plural because I haven't come out and said so. There are some things that I don't like about not coming out all the way because I would like other people in various situations to be able to find me and go, oh, that's somebody we know that's plural. For instance, um, I'm in the Debian community with the Debian GNU Linux community and nobody talks about that very much in the Debian community. Um, or I've, I'm an, you know, I'm an engineer or I have been an engineer and it's like, you don't hear about engineers being plural very much, although it's not uncommon. I've known a number of, of engineers that were plural and didn't know. Um, and I can explain how I'm pretty sure that's the case. I can't say for sure that they are being that they haven't, they haven't figured it out for themselves and stated so, but I, I'm pretty sure, um, and so forth. And so there's, I sort of have mixed feelings about it because I don't know how much further to take it or, or where necessarily where to go with it. Or, and I, I don't want to tell certain family because they aren't as empathetic and understanding and I don't want them to know. Um, and they, they'll probably be judgmental about it or tell me what I need to do to fix this or whatever, you know, it's just not their business. So, um, so yeah, I've got mixed feelings on all, on all sides about it. I don't, I don't regret coming out to people that are, that are cool about it. You know, like this, that's all good. And I, and I certainly like telling other people that are plural and talking about it and discussing it and helping people and, and them helping me. And that's, that's great. So I have no regrets at the same time that, uh, about, about coming out at all, but I do have some trepidation about coming out further and what to do. Thank you so much.
What is the best thing about being plural in a singular world? Allie here. We love each other, and we get to teach and show that to the world and help heal the world in that process. Also, <laughs> we have more friends than singlets because we can have 196 people in a video call using just five computers. <laughs> The best, our favorite thing about being plural is that we all sort of have like, it's kind of like it, like a role play, like a um, RPG party. We all have different people, different personalities, different mindsets, different skill sets, even in some cases. And we're able to sort of like balance each other out. We're able to work together to handle different situations in our life. If someone's having a breakdown and we need to really need to get like some work done, we can switch out and um, we can you know keep doing that work. Or if someone's trying to sort of handle a very anxiety inducing situation, we can switch with someone who's not anxious about it. So it's it's really good to have like a whole team of people in one body that are able to handle all these different things that. Um, you know, life is going to throw at us. And that's, I, that's definitely really powerful and really, really beneficial for us. What's the best thing about being plural in a singular world? Well, I'm not exactly sure, except being able to deal with maybe, maybe being able to deal with situations in unexpected ways. Um, as an example, I had a family member that was severely depressed that was, that I was trying to figure out how to help motivate back from, you know, very strong depression. And the way in which I decided to do it was to switch to a more uh, protector personality that did not feel as much empathy and did not need to feel the feelings that this family member was going through. And yet behind that personality, behind front, was another personality that had more empathy that could help guide the protector to figure out like how to say you know empathetic things but not feel any of the painful feelings that the that the family member was going through and so this way sort of like sort of guide them back to sanity if you will like guide them off of the cliff and yet not having to feel like i'm on the cliff you know myself um that was that was relatively interesting that was relatively new for us as a as a thing we figured out it sort of like to do this on the fly because it was painful and i didn't want to be i didn't want to it wasn't going to be you know like you know comfortable sitting there crying or or and it was also the family member was also uh somewhat responsible for us being plural in the first place in other words they were one of our abusers so it didn't really fit to be all like upset about them wanting to you know like feeling all depressed and so it was just it was a really awkward situation but anyway so i'm not really sure what's what the most you know what the best thing about it is basically the way i think about it is it just is and i and i deal with it the best way i can amazing to hear your answers thanks what is your best advice for plurals thinking about coming out Eliza here, just, first of all, congratulations. Congratulations on thinking about coming out as plural. It means you know you are plural, which can take an extremely long time to figure out. It also means you're considering the benefits of sharing who you authentically are. That's a really good sign. And then you're watching this video, which means one way or another, you all have come upon a conference full of folks like us dedicating our lives to helping other plurals. Many of us had to do it alone. You don't have to reach out to us, anyone you resonate with in a PPWC talk uh, and ask for support or advice on your specific situation because it really does vary, right? Some people um, have a supportive environment and they just need to get the courage to build it up and other folks have really real risks that they need to strategize against and it's all valid. Um, we Redwoods are starting to organize spaces specifically for plurals thinking together about their coming out plans. And this is really an evergreen topic in most online plural spaces. So if you go somewhere where there are plurals, there will be conversations about coming out. 
Connect with community. You all are not alone. And most systems are not out to more than a few people. So do not feel bad if you haven't come out to more people yet. We face oppression as a group and it's normal to hide in those conditions. It's normal if it feels almost impossibly hard in the beginning. Once you successfully come out to some of the bigger relationships, over years, it can feel more possible to also tell others and others. It's really a revolutionary act and revolutionary acts take time and the right conditions. I have faith, we have faith that your time will arrive and working together as a community, we can help it arrive faster for more plurals. This is a, so it may feel like an all at once thing, but it's really one relationship, one venue, one platform at a time. And that's a good thing because you can control the pace and a hard thing because you're never done. Choose some less risky people to come out to. Anyone you personally know who is plural, but also communities and individuals that already get other forms of complexity surrounding identity, community, alternative approaches to things that the mainstream might hold in a certain way. So we found support around intentional communities and housing cooperatives, uh, social justice spaces, places where people are open to questioning um, as opposed to maybe more con conservative audiences. And you can get kind of practice under your belt. And like we said earlier, when we first explained it, it was very convoluted. And now we can have kind of a quick pitch and you'll get there with practice. That said, you can still approach the ones you love vulnerably and say, hey, we really need to talk about this. And this is where we're at. Yeah, those are good points. This is joy. I would say like the risks are real, you know, anyone who is out and visible now likely depended on some form of privilege to be able to take the risks that we take, as well as some amount of sacrifice and loss. And so just to validate that it feels scary and that it's not simple always, you know, plan, but move forward. This is Petra, hi, <laughs> this is appropriate. As you find more system members, uh, as each of you comes to term with your individual identities, as your understanding of your own system changes, you will likely need to come out to the same people multiple times. That's valid and part of multiplicity. We have to do this again, we're multiple. And we figured out a new way or a new approach or a new person or a new person wants to share a different dimension of that. Really try to notice the people who have a lot of bandwidth and are interested in your journey um, in, a, in a healthy way where they're like, oh, you wanna share something? Cool, you know? Um, we have some friends who are always down to hear what's going on in our internal world and those people are really precious. You can set the boundaries and you can, can control the conversation and have more than one conversation. Like if people just hear about it once, they'll kind of treat it like, oh, this is a mental illness that um, this person doesn't want to talk about again. But if you kind of show that it's a regular part of your life, however, then it starts to be like, oh, this is an ongoing topic. Like y'all are gonna be here as y'all makes more sense. Um, yeah. Our advice for other systems who want to come out is to first of all, make sure you're safe. Make sure you're safe, you feel safe doing so and make sure that you feel comfortable doing so. Because if you're not, if you're in a situation where someone's going to, I don't know, give you, give you like, th suddenly think of you differently or treat you badly, then probably don't do it. But if, if you feel like, okay, this is probably a situation where we can do this safely and we can be comfortable. And if there's negative consequences, we can deal with them. That's really something that you need to sort of weigh what, what the uh, benefits are and what the possible consequences are. And if you're able to sort of balance those and handle it when it comes, because generally if you're not, if you're not ready, you're probably going to, well, if you're not ready, then, well, you're not ready and you don't really have to come out to anyone. So you should take your time. If you really think you need to, then go for it, but make sure you're ready, I guess is the bottom line of that. My best advice concerning plurals that are considering coming out 
is to consider it well and get agreement from everybody in your head uh, about who to come out to and to choose who you decide to come out to, whether it be to the entire world or whether it be to particular family members, friends, whoever, um, that you that it's your choice and it's okay to come out part way and it's okay to come out all the way and it's okay not to come out at all. It's it's up to all of you what you choose. And and so that's my advice. This is Ali. Thanks everybody. You're you're welcome to get in touch with us through our site or social media to learn more about the spaces we run or know about that might help you with your coming out journey and plural community in general. Basically, I just wanted to close saying you all deserve to be out and free and safe. And you are worth whatever path it takes to get there. Begin, rest, and keep going. This is Eliza. Y'all are worth it. This has been an incredible life-changing journey. And I'm so grateful that I get to share it with the people in my body. And the world benefits from knowing about your journey too. And your loved ones benefit from that. Um, even if it takes them some time to see it. Y'all are worth it. Thanks to all the other panelists for the opportunity to participate in this important conversation. Thank you. Thank you so much for all the wonderful questions. And of course, thank everyone who's you know listening to this panel. Um, plural rights, I guess. Just like to add some closing remarks. If anyone would like to contact me, I would love to hear you know from you and talk to you about whether whether you're plural or not, or want to know more about it. Um, you can email me at user three five nine at protonmail ch, and we can take it from there. Thank you, and have a good day. Thank you for answering our last question of this coming out panel. We thank our panel members for dedicating their time and speaking so openly about their experiences as coming out as plural for the Plural Positivity World Conference 2020. There will be many more sessions this weekend, so please stay tuned.